Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. We are Kingdom Builders Covenant Exchange Ministries. Uh, thank you for joining us for another Wednesday evening Bible study. It is always a blessing to be with you. We thank God for you, and we are looking forward to go ahead and getting in the Word tonight. Um, uh, we pray that you all have had a blessed week. I uh, hope that you all were blessed by the word on Sunday, wherever you receive the word. And we hope that you didn't just get the word on Sunday and you're not just going to get it today, but that you have been in your word, that you have been in your prayer closet all week long. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get ready to uh, pass it on to the man of God so he can pray us in. And then we'll go ahead and get on into the word tonight. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I thank God for all of you. But other than that, let's go and get right into the prayer. Lord, I just thank you for everything that you have done already for this week, God. God, we thank you for all the covering, all the blood covering on every person, God. Mm -hmm. Those that's looking for a word on tonight, God, we thank you, Father God. We thank you, God, for all the families, yes, uh, all the individuals, God, that coming from a working home or whatever it may be, Father God, for those that don't have the job, that God, you, you will give them job at this opportunity. But at this time, Father God, allow them to seek a word through this Bible teaching today. Day, Father God, we thank you for everything that you're doing right now, Father God. God, we ask you to pull down all strongholds today, God. Allow the fire of God to consume every situation right now, Father God. God, we thank you for every person that's looking down low, that you pull them up today, Father God. To draw them by your bosom, Father God. Draw them forward, God. Draw them unto the cross, Father God. Denying that whatever situation they're dealing with right now, Father God. Any shame or any uh, condemnation, whatever it may be, Father God. God, we thank you for the blood covering, God. God, we thank you for this nation, God, that you dispatch every angel to those that need your help, God. Yes. Those that's going through uh, domestic violence, whatever it may be, or any rape, or whatever it may be, Father God. God, we thank you for everything that you cover today. Allow your wind to blow a fresh wind upon them today. Let us get knowledge today in this, in this Bible teaching, God, as we sit down today. Allow you to come forth today yes, so we can be a, a blessing to someone else, God, or some soul that needs the word, God. And God, we thank you for everything that you're doing right now. In Jesus' name we pray. We say thank God. Thank Amen. 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 This week we're going to be uh, back in John chapter 8. We'll be concluding the 8th chapter of John on tonight. Uh, we'll be starting with the 56th verse and going on into verse 59. Um, if you remember last week, we picked up, we were in, uh, was in verses uh, 48 through 55, um, where, you know, Jesus was talking. So Jesus is still speaking as we pick up in verse 56. Um, and verse 56 reads, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Amen. Then said the Jews unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham, I am. I'm sorry, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. <laughs> yeah, that's good. You want to start off now? I, I can tell you this is a very... Uh, good part of the lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, I thank God for uh, chapter 8. I, has, I have got so much revelation from chapter 8. Amen. Or just the gospel John period, you know, of uh, how Jesus was facing um, his opposition was the Pharisees at this moment. Uh, we, we will find out that they had a debate and, and just knowing who he was in Christ. Uh, and they was very rub wrong, so they didn't know uh, what they were facing. Amen. They didn't know that he was ready <laughs> to, to break up some 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 old tradition that people have. Uh -uh. And knowing that how the Pharisees are, you know, their job is to to do whatever they they want to do. Uh, they'll tell you what to do, but they'll do the opposite what what <laughs> what they're saying. Uh, and you know, we are in time like that where we have people that's in leadership um, that's telling you to do one thing, but they're not doing what they're saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, 
Jesus is calling them out. You know, and you're going to see a lot of stuff that's happening uh, when you came into the chapter uh, where the argument started, you know, in the feast, you know. And we thank God for that. We thank God that, you know, Jesus stands firm on, on believe on the word of God. And if you know uh, as a person, or uh, an intercessor, or uh, a pastor, you know, to stick with the word, you know, don't, don't, don't deviate it, but stick with the, the true living word. Because the thing about it, when you got the true and living word, it, 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 everything else is just tossed to and fro, you know, because you're going to have people with their own doctrines, their own ideas, or whatever it may be, um, but it's not being confirmed by the word of God. And that's why Jesus himself came down uh, 42 gen generations to, to clear up the right uh, information because one thing about it, his name was on the line on this. And the thing about it, he came with authority and letting them know whatever you came out of the Torah is wrong. So he came to free us from our own traditions, our own ways, because sometimes you can have your own traditions, you are. Know? You can definitely have your own traditions. Uh, if you don't, you know, because I tell a lot of people, when you read the word of God, read it slowly, take your time, and get some information, find out who Jesus is. And that's why he was bringing what he was talking about, because they were so stuck on Abraham. They forgot when the thing that they was taught, that he was coming, but didn't know that the person that they was when talked about that was right in front of them, and he contested them. He debated them on everything that they was talking about. And I know in the process, we look at uh, uh, verse 56, where you, you know how uh, he was explaining how Abraham was, was rejoicing. He was pretty much, they, they in heaven, you know, that Abraham was, was looking for this moment, you know, just imagine how people that leave in the earth, they finally get an opportunity to see the one that died upon the cross. So you got to understand their, their position was not a good one. You know, it was their position was to turn down the goodness of Christ, his character, his integrity. <clears throat> you found out uh, last week how they had said some things that rubbed Jesus wrong, you know, he, you know, and that's the thing about it. He presented himself firm. If you're in the word of God, the word of truth, stand firm. Stand firm on that. Because you're going to have people that's going to test you. That's why it's good to read the word, meditate on the word, get some prayer behind it. Because, you know, you can read the Bible all day long, but if you don't have no communication with God, any relationship with God, you won't get the proper information, the clarification, and the preparation for everything. So I just thank God for that, you know, to, 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 to understand that God is always in the midst because he is the word. Anything, sweetheart? Um, I just, um, you know, uh, I, this whole chapter has been really good, really, really good. And it's been a testament uh, for us that are here seeking seeking as disciples to walk after Christ, to uh, uh, live the way that he has charged us to do. You know, it's been a, an example for us to see how easily it can be to get caught up in ourselves and totally miss the Messiah, the totally missed the Savior that we're looking for. And so we, you know, it's, it's been uh, uh, one of those lessons that kind of, um, it's like a, that one that will provoke you to do a self-examination, you know, to just see where are you really, yeah. you know, because the very thing that they were accusing Jesus of, <laughs> he was, they were really, you know, calling out their own sins, calling out their own yeah. wrongdoing. Yeah. You know, the things uh -huh. that they saw, uh, um, what they thought they saw in Jesus was really like a mirror reflecting back <laughs> who they really were yeah. or what they were. And if you recall from last week, um, they had called Jesus 
where they had told Jesus, you know, you you have a devil. And then, <laughs> you know, he, you know, uh, uh, Jesus answered that and they, they came back and said, well, now we know you have a devil. We know for sure. Now we really know you have a devil. We thought you might have a devil, you know, when you first, first start talking about now we know for sure yeah. and the thing about it is that if we take a look here as we go on through the lesson today we're going to really see uh, uh the spirit that we're dealing with mm -hmm. and how an evil spirit responds to truth mm -hmm. um That's good. That's good. because you know here you know of course jesus is saying that you know hey abraham your father you know, your father, Abraham, the one who you are saying that you are of, the one who, 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 who you're a child of, the one who you're a disciple of, the one who you follow, uh, which will be the one who will ultimately, hey, because you are the seed of Abraham, you're supposed to be uh, 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 the children of God. Yeah. You're supposed to be of God's elect. You're supposed to be those that belong to Yahweh. You're supposed to be those all of those yeah. would in turn be followers of christ yeah, that's good. but they're speaking to christ the one who they're supposed to be a disciple of the ones who they're supposed to be a follower of the one who they're supposed to be upholding the name of mm -hmm. the one who they're supposed to be epistles of that <laughs> they are in direct conflict mm -hmm. with Christ mm -hmm. in this situation. Mm -hmm. And they go on to say, well, you know, they're, they're judging him by his age. And they say, oh, well, you know, you're not even 50. Mm -hmm. So you, you mean to tell us that you saw Abraham and you're not even 50 years old? You're not even old enough to have seen Abraham. But Jesus comes back and says, before Abraham was, Mm. I am. He didn't say before, he didn't say that he was before Abraham was. He said that before Abraham was, I am. I am. That 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 means that that, that goes back to the beginning. Mm. Now mm. and later on. That, that ties into was and is to come. You know what I'm saying? I am. He didn't separate himself. He said, I am. Yeah, that's good. Before Abraham was, I am. Yeah. That's indicative of a, an eternal existence. Abraham could only go so far. Yeah. <laughs> Abraham couldn't Abraham yeah. couldn't yeah. go beyond I am. He couldn't go beyond I am. So so Jesus lets them know right then mm. this this father that you this man that you're taking upon as your father can does not have power, does not have authority. That name is not greater than the name of the one that you are here to try to discredit the one that you're here to try to kill, the one that you're here to try to sabotage mm. the plan for their own redemption. Mm. Because if we go back, that's what they were there for. Yeah. The, the, when, we, we, when we got into this thing, they were seeking him at the feast yeah. so that they could kill him. Yeah. That in itself, a plot and a plan of the enemy yeah, yeah. because his time was not come. Yeah. Had they had the power yeah. and the authority, the authorization yeah. to take his life, yeah. redemption would be gone. Oh, that's good. Redemption would be none. Yeah, that's no good. such thing. That's good. <laughs> It's just, just awesome how, you know, just to see how this thing plays out and how the very thing that they're calling Jesus 
they're acting as such. Their actions, their actions are consistent. Their conversation and their actions are consistent with what they're calling truth. Man, that's good. Man, that's, that's, that's some good, that's some good food, man. Right? Man, I, I just, I am so amazed how, how the Pharisees was, their intent was not the argument. <laughs> that's why I, I, I tell you, people do things just to start something so they can cause confusion. Uh, their mindset is already set to do whatever they're going to do. We already found out that like she was talking that their mindset was already was focused on killing him. It wasn't even about the discussion or debate. But the thing about it, he knew what they was trying to do. That's the thing. He knew before they even came looking for him. That's why, uh, if you notice, early in chapter 7, where he was trying to, when he didn't want to go down in certain areas because he knew they was pointing certain locations where he was going to be in. You know, and, you know, and that's, that's the thing of your discernment on certain situations. You got to be in, in the right position where when something is telling you not to go somewhere, you know, because people are, you know, uh, set, trying to set plat, you know, traps and, uh, and, and potholes for you. So, you can trip up on things. So, you know, that's why you got to be firm in the word of God. You know, uh, you, you can see Jesus showed his human side and his God side. You know, <laughs> he showed in, in so many different areas where putting a, a, a debate because you think about it, the Pharisees itself, the name itself means a self-righteous person who's a hypocrite. You know, you have a lot of hypocrites. Their, their, their mindset is not for soul winning, but for, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying my best not to say it, but, you know, their, their, their ways are, are to draw you in what's in your pockets. You know what I'm saying? They're not, they're not there to Still draw. They're serving agenda. They're, they're not there for your heart. You can tell the ones that's for your heart. You can tell the ones that's for uh, their own uh, ways. They're boosting up their, they're, 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 they're boasting up their own self. That's why Jesus was talking about earlier how, you know, I'm not here to boost myself up. You know, you get angry. I'm not here to boost myself. I'm boosting the Father that's in heaven. I'm boosting him up. Because whatever he do, I do. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't move unless he, he moves. So what is your agenda? Your agenda is to kill me. That's what he said on the last couple of weeks or a week ago. That's your agenda. That's your mindset. Your mindset is even about the conversation. The mindset is not trying to correct me on something. Your mindset is, hey, you are blessed being against God and don't, don't, don't even realize that he is God. And he is the word of God. So we, 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 we're looking at the two parts. What was their purpose of talking to Jesus? What was the set up plan? Because if you notice, they was always trying to trip him up. <laughs> I can name one with the woman that was caught in a doctrine. That was a setup. It wasn't for, for Jesus to, you know, they were trying to catch him uh, in a situation. But he flipped it on them. Mm -hmm. He said, let any man that had ever seen cast the first stone. He was drawing on the ground. So you, you got to see people's motives are <laughs> different than what you think they are. You know, mm -hmm. they're not at the motive the time of your conversation, that conversation is on something that was from the past or, 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 or set up, you know. And you got to realize these are religious leaders here. You know, these are people that studied the Torah, you know what I'm saying? The Jewish Bible that they had, that they had, wasn't really finished. But they are being taught, you know, 
they've been teached on, you know. But they, the, 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 the mindset, you know, they couldn't fathom that this is God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So God put them in their place. Um, as you were talking about how, you know, talking about the agenda uh, of these people, the thing that, uh, you know, came to me is the fact that, you know, the difference, we're, we're dealing with two types of people here. And not two types of people, but we see the, the group, the group of Pharisees, Jewish leaders, they have an assignment. Yep. And we have Jesus. Yep. Who also has an assignment. Yep. Uh, and the difference between the two, the major difference between the two is that it's knowledge. Okay? Jesus has knowledge of his assignment. Mm, that's good. Purpose. That's good. The, the, the Pharisees in this situation, they don't even know that they are sent on assignment. Jesus knows if we go back to verse 16, okay, he lets them know that he, he knows he's on assignment. He knows who he was sent by. It is the father that sent me. <laughs> but these, this group, they're on assignment. Mm, that's good. They're on assignment sent that's good. of the evil one. Mm, that's good, that's good. They don't even know that they're on an assignment. Mm, they don't even have knowledge. They, they are so out of tune with that's the good. God that they say that they serve oh, that they don't even know that they are being used of the devil. Mm. They don't even know that they are on assignment mm, to thwart the assignment of God. They are on assignment being used by, 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 by the, the enemy, the same devil that they're saying that Jesus is, <laughs> is accusing Jesus of being possessed with for fulfilling his assignment of the Father. Mm, that's good. They don't even know that they're being used of that same worker of evil that they're saying Jesus is possessed by mm. or they're accusing him of being possessed by and the thing that that that, that we want to take into account to account here is that you have to have knowledge of your assignment if you do not have full not if you don't have a clear understanding of your assignment and what it is that God have purposed you to do in whatever season of your life that you are in, you will not be able to adequately discern those that are on assignment working in opposition to you fulfilling the mandate of your assignment. Mm -hmm. So we have to be so in tune with yeah. God. That's good. We have to be so in tune with our Heavenly Father, regardless of what season we're in, regardless of what path our assignment takes us, regardless of whatever obstacle or folks might try to get in the way, we have to have enough connection with God that it does not matter what comes. We will not be moved from our assignment. And we're going to be able to discern the things that the kingdom of darkness will put in our way to keep us from our purpose in God. Good. Good. Every single time Jesus was able to pinpoint his adversary at work. He was able to discern the language of the naysayers. He was able to discern the intent of the workers of iniquity that were coming against him, regardless of if their conversation was that which sounded right. Mm. It may have sounded right. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times we're in these positions, we're in these situations, we're in these, mm. we, we, we in these, we interacting with folks. We're, uh, you know, doing business with people. We having church with people. And the thing about it is they saying all the right stuff and it sounds like it's in line, but their heart's intent. We should be able to discern the spirit of a person that we are interacting with. Not because of what they're saying, 
But because the communication that we have with the Father, that communication that we have with the Father should, 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 should be able to cause your spirit man to rise up and be able to decide between the good and the evil. And when you are in the midst of people that are doing evil work, God always gives us a way of escape. He always makes a way of escape. Just like right here we see in verse, was it 59? Jesus is able to, God gives him, God give, because he is so connected with his assignment, because he is so focused on not missing, because he is so focused on not being moved, because he is so focused on obeying whatever the Father has given him to do, he is able to go right through them. And they miss him. And it's not because he doing he ain't doing no magic tricks. He ain't doing no hoodoo and no voodoo and whatever else. He ain't doing none of that. He's moving strategically according to whatever the Father have given him to do. And that's how we have to be in our everyday life, whether it be our parenting, whether it be our marriage, whether it be our ministry, whether it be our career path, whether it be our interaction with a stranger. Whether it be getting up and going, getting up, getting in your car and driving to the job that you've been driving to every single day for 20 years. We need to be so in tune with the Father that if the Father say, hey, don't take this route that you usually take, we are going to move according to whatever God has given us to do. Because we never know. You know, it, it made, Jesus didn't try to make it make sense what they were saying. Well, why are they calling me a devil? The, the father already gave him what he needed to discern. All he needed to be worried about is, hey, let me do what I'm here to do. And sometimes we can't, we can't get in that place where when God give us some instruction, well, God, well, why are you telling me to do that? Well, Lord, this don't make sense. Well, Lord, I ain't got enough in my account to go and get this thing that you're telling me to go get. Or I don't have enough money to go and start this ministry that you're telling me to start. And how am I going to do whatever it is that you're telling me to do? Trust God enough to know that if he gives you a vision, if he gives you an assignment, he has already made the way plain for you. All the way is waiting for is for your obedience to arrive. And that's it. That's all. Hope y'all enjoying this. And I tell you, she had said something so powerful uh, about the two parts. And, uh, I just want to put it back on what you were saying. Uh, we had one perfect one person with purpose, you got one person with disruption. So you have those mm -hmm. two types mm -hmm. of people. Uh, you know, and, and it didn't just start with, with them two, it started from the beginning in Genesis with Cain and Abel. You know, uh, Abel was a person of purpose, and Cain was a person of disruption because he caused the curse to come, and he was the first person that murdered somebody. So you got to know the difference between the two. You know, you have that type of person that's up on the, on the earth. You know, you have the people that's purpose driven. You have the uh, people that's, that want to be disrupted. They want to cause record, to cause uh, a situation to stop. Uh, if you look at Nehemiah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, in that situation, you know, he, he was a cup bearer, amen. You know, and, and he, he was a person of, uh, of, I don't know, he just had a military mindset. You know what I'm saying? He was trying to do the good part, you know, trying to close it off. You know, you got another person that was trying to stop him from doing what he was doing. You know, you have people that come to try to stop your progress and your vision, but you can't allow uh, 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 dream killers to kill out what Amen. God put in your, in your heart and your mind, you know what I'm saying? Because whatever God put there, he's already got people in position to help you. That's the thing. That's the thing. So. You have people that will come in and say they'll whisper all kinds of crazy stuff to you that don't even add up with God. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? I don't think you can do that. <laughs> you know, I, I had so many people tell me that. You know, uh, why are you doing that? You know, 
that ain't of God. How you know it ain't of God? Was you in my dreams? Uh, was you in my vision? Was you in the car when God was talking to me? Was you that when, when, when everything was going crazy and, and hey, why? You know, you, you've got to understand the assignment that God have on your life. And Jesus understood his assignment. That's why he made a, a, a perfect model, a perfect model. How, as she just spoke earlier, the two differences, one with purpose, one with disruption. It's always going to happen. You always have that. You have one person that's <laughs> with purpose, you have one with disruption. You have Democrat, you got Republicans. <laughs> you got, you know, you got two different ones, you know what I'm saying? One with purpose and one with uh, disruption. Depends on who, who that are. So I, I, I just thank God because the difference. You got two different things. You know, that's why I, I thank God that she she spoke that. You know, I don't even realize the, the, the birth and what, what God put in her to, to speak that. Because purpose is always on the line. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said it very clearly in Matthew 5, that you're blessed. You are persecuted because of the namesake. When you go forward, if you write out a vision or God gave you a vision or a, a business plan or whatever it may be, you're going to always have opposition. People who are trying to disrupt what you're trying to do. You have anything? Um, because I, 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 it's, it's a good word. Uh, the only thing I really have to say, you know, to just add is that, you know, uh, you got to make sure that when it comes to uh, our assignment, our purpose, our destiny, we have we, we can't be in, we can't operate from a place of ignorance. We have to operate from a place of knowledge, and, and that's and that's the thing. You know what I'm saying when we get to just doing stuff, just just doing stuff, we're operating without revelation. We're operating just just operating. We're just doing whatever. And that's how you get into that place when, when, when you are, are, are not cognizant, you're operating uh, with ignorance. You have no clue what your assignment is. That's how you fall into the place of being a distraction. You know what I'm saying? You can be used to distract. You can be used to kill. You can be used to uh, uh, try to abort the very thing that God is trying to do, that God has purpose to do. You know what I'm saying? And so we have to keep our focus on what is our assignment, being knowledgeable, being knowledgeable of what our assignment is. And then also not just have knowledge of what you're supposed to be doing, but have knowledge, enough knowledge to stay in tune with the Father who is giving you your assignment, that you would be able to discern. Discern the things, the, discern the things that those that are on a different type of assignment that is not of God. That you would have knowledge to discern the thing that they're ignorant of. Mm -hmm. that's good, that's good. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of time, you know, especially, you know, in the church, even in our families, sometimes we can be we can be the one where, where God has given the family unit an assignment, a purpose, an assignment for the unit, for the for the your union, your marital union, for your family, or whatever. You know, God has given us an assignment. He has placed a mandate on that union. But sometimes we can allow ourselves because we are not staying in the face of God, in the presence of God like we should. 
we miss the assignment. And so because we're ignorant to what our assignment is for that union, that's good. That's good. the enemy will come in with an assignment of his own. Oh, man, that's good. That's good. We can be used to thwart the assignment of our union. Because we did not stay in the face of, of God to get the knowledge that we need. That some because some things are only going to come by supernatural revelation. Some things are only going to come by divine uh, uh, interruption that God will cause to fall into your life. And if you're not, if you if you are not in a in a in a posture to become knowledgeable to receive that revelation. You're going to be in a place of ignorance, and it's going to cost. It's going to cost something. You know what I'm saying? And eventually, you'll get the knowledge because at his death, at his burial, at his resurrection, oh, they got the knowledge. <laughs> they received the knowledge of both their ignorance, and they received the knowledge of his assignment. They received the knowledge of who the Messiah truly was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't, 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 don't miss time that's valuable. Because I can, I, I, I can only imagine. I, I, with, you know, with my, 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 I use my imagination to just see what in the world could they have possibly felt. What in the world could they have possibly thought when they look back on these moments, when they realize that, oh my goodness, I was in the presence of the king and I was using my time, my opportunity, my moment. Oh my goodness, I was in a blessed place. Hallelujah. And I threw it away. What did they think? When that stone was rolled away, and he was not there. What did these same ones, when he was on the cross and he gave up his life, and the sky <laughs> did something that, hey, this is not normal. When the earth trembled, what were they thinking? When they came into the knowledge that, oh my goodness, we, we, we have been in the presence of the one. We have been in the presence of truth and called it a liar. Oh, that's not a good thing. I know I've had some moments in my life where God have allowed opportunities to, where, where something, God have allowed something to present itself, a, a door that I definitely, desperately needed to open in my life. But because it did not come packaged the way that I thought it would be packaged, because they didn't hey. come speaking in, hey, the, in, 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 in the dialect that I thought it would come. Hallelujah. That's good. That's because good. they didn't have the skin, the skin complexion that I thought it would come in. Because they didn't come speaking, you know. They came packaged kind of rough. Because it came looking like something that I wasn't interested in. I, I, I discounted it. I discredited it. I thought, oh, God ain't in that. Until it came back around again. Lord, that mercy. That's Until God gave me another chance. Oh, and baby, when I had when, when, when I had when, when I came into the knowledge, when God brought me into the knowledge of my own ignorance. Oh, oh baby, that was a humbling experience for me. <laughs> and then I thought about time, lost time. But the good thing about it is God is the redeemer of time. Woo! He is the redeemer of time. He can do things with time and, and miss opportunities that nobody else can do. That's good. And so just stay postured. Mm. Stay postured to, 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 
to be in the face of God so that you can receive that which only he can give so that you can be in a position to, to, to hold on to the thing that no man can take away. Don't miss time and opportunity because you have your own ideas, because you have your own will for your life. Stay in a place that you have postured that your will and your desires line up with your assignment that the Father has given you. Amen, 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 amen. Man, man, I understand God for a beautiful, uh, another book, a beautiful Bible study. Again, my wife has explained and expound on so much data. And uh, I thank God, I pray God that you would receive so many great uh, comments uh, to kind of help you out through the week. Um, I thank God for, uh, you know, just the purpose, you know, uh, what the word sent out for us to do, you know, to, to accomplish. Mm -hmm. uh, God watches over his word, as you explained earlier, you know, when we were doing our little uh, conversation. Yeah, there's a whole nother problem. Yeah, but other than that, I thank God for all of you. I pray, God, that, you know, the blessing of the Lord added me, and blessings Make upon you, and added and those, and those, those um, to you. Um, for those that are looking for prayer or opportunity uh, to be with us or connect with us, you know, you can subscribe or you can put down on the internet, you know, uh, on our email address, mm -hmm. uh, or any prayers or whatever. And then also we want to thank God for all those that has just gave us number love. We thank God for you. Uh, but other than that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pray us out. We thank God for all of you. Show up again for next week. We will have another awesome time. I get an opportunity to read chapter nine. That's what we're going to be in next week. Mm -hmm. And we definitely thank God for all of you uh, that we pray the strength of the Lord be with you. And uh, we just thank God. But other than that, let's go ahead and pray us. And then we get on out of here. Lord, first off, I want to give you an honor for all those that's watching right now. Allow the power of God to be upon them, Father God. Allow to, the healing uh, to go through them, Father God. Any things that they're dealing with, any lack that's, that, that they're dealing with, that you cut it off, God. Bring forth increase, God. God, I thank you for the filling of, the, of your spirit. Allow your glory to be where they're at right now, Father God. God, whatever thing that they're looking for, whatever they're lacking, God, give them spiritual understanding, God, for the purpose at this moment. And God, we thank you for this moment, for this Bible study that you taught us for, for the purpose driven that nothing can withhold the word of God. Yes, Everything Lord. will go down, but the word of God shall stand forever and evermore. Let the king of glory, <laughs> let the king of glory shine in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. He said, thank God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We'll see you next week. God bless.